Let's start with the simplest and most common, the straight or inline engine. Picture a neat row of pistons all in a single line. The most common versions are inline fours, but you'll also see inline threes, inline sixes, and even the occasional inline five. Why do car makers love them? Simplicity. One cylinder head, one bank of pistons, easy to build, easy to service. It's like the basic Lego brick of engines. Inline fours power everything from budget hatchbacks to sport bikes to family sedans. But there's a catch. As you add more cylinders in a line, the engine gets longer. That's fine for something like an inline six in a long hood BMW or a truck, but it's tricky to fit in a small front wheel drive car. Still, the inline six in particular is famous for being incredibly smooth. The firing order naturally cancels out vibrations, making it a favorite for luxury cars and performance icons. Next, we have the V engine. Instead of one row of pistons, you have two banks arranged in a V-shape anywhere from 60 to 90 degrees apart for most designs. This lets you pack more cylinders into a shorter length, which is why V6s, V8s are so common. The V-shape also makes for a stiffer crankshaft compared to a really long inline engine, which is good for high performance. NV engines can sound amazing. Think about the deep rumble of a classic American V8 or the high-pitched scream of a Ferrari V12. But there are trade-offs. You now need two cylinder heads, two exhaust manifolds, and the engine is often wider. More parts can mean more cost and complexity. Still, from trucks to supercars, the V engine is an absolute legend. Now let's get a little exotic with the W engine. This is like a V engine, but extra. A W engine basically crams more cylinder banks together in a more compact form. The most famous example? The W16 from the Bugatti Veyron and Chiron, that's 16 cylinders in four banks of four, arranged like two narrow-angle V8S stuck together. There's also VW's W12 and even a W8. The benefit is you get massive displacement and cylinder count in a relatively short package. The downside? Complexity. A W engine is like a three-dimensional puzzle of parts, and the only people smiling when one breaks are the mechanics and that's because they're billing you by the hour. From a W, we flatten things out with the flat engine, also known as the horizontally opposed engine. Picture two banks of cylinders facing opposite of each other, lying flat, with pistons punching outwards. In a boxer engine, the pistons move in opposite directions at the same time, like two boxers throwing punches in sync, and each piston has its own crankshaft pin. This helps cancel out vibration, making them very smooth. Porsche uses flat six engines in the 911, Subaru loves flat fours, and you'll even find flat engines in some small aircraft. One big advantage is that a flat engine has a low center of gravity, improving handling. The drawback? They can be wider than a sumo wrestler doing the splits, so they're harder to fit in narrow engine bays. Here's a weird one, the VR engine. Imagine a V engine, but squish the angle between the banks so much that you can use just one cylinder head for all the cylinders. Volkswagen came up with this in the 1990s to fit six cylinders into small cars without making the hood too long. The VR6 had a 15 degree angle between banks, so it's not quite in line. Not quite V, it's a hybrid of both. It saved space, sounded unique, and made for some surprisingly quick golfs and passats. But it was also a bit tricky to work on and newer engine designs have mostly replaced it. Let's take a trip to the skies for the radial engine. This is the one that looks like a starfish made of pistons. All the cylinders are arranged in a circle around the crankshaft, and each piston's connecting rod attaches to a special master rod in the middle. Radials were common in aircraft before turbine engines took over. Why? They're air-cooled, light for their power, and they make a ton of torque perfect for turning a big propeller. Plus, they're incredibly reliable. The downside is that they're not aerodynamic at all, which is fine for planes with big round cowls, but terrible for cars. That's why you rarely see radial engines in ground vehicles, though some crazy inventors have tried. Let's start the madness with the H engine. Think of it as two flat engines stacked. You've got one flat engine on top of another, both driving a common crankshaft. So from the side, it forms the letter H. Why would anyone do this? Power and lots of it. The H layout was used in some aircraft during World War II to essentially double the power of a flat engine without making it wider. 
It was also tried in motorsport the BRM H16 Formula One car in the 1960s had 16 cylinders in an H layout. The idea sounds amazing, but in practice? Heavy, complex, and not very reliable. Let's just say mechanics weren't lining up to work on one. If the H engine is too flat stacked, the X engine is basically two V engines crossed. For banks of cylinders around a common crankshaft from the front, it looks like an X. These were rare, but a few military aircraft used them, like the Napier Sabre, an insane 24-cylinder monster that powered some of the fastest piston engine planes ever built. The advantage? Tons of cylinders in a short length. The disadvantage? Imagine the maintenance bill. If AV engine is complex, an X engine is an engineer's fever dream turned into a mechanic's nightmare. Now for something that doesn't even look like an engine, the swashplate engine. Instead of pistons pushing a traditional crankshaft, they push on an angled plate, the swash plate, which converts that motion into rotation. This setup can be incredibly compact and can pack many pistons into a small space. You'll find them in some helicopters and specialized machinery. The pros? High power density and fewer moving parts than you might think. The cons? Tricky lubrication, unusual wear patterns, and the fact that most mechanics will scratch their heads when you ask them to fix one. Here's another oddball, the delta engine. As the name suggests, the cylinders are arranged in a triangle or delta shape. One of the best known examples is the Napier Deltic, a triangular, opposed piston, two-stroke diesel engine used in trains and naval vessels. The design allows for a very high power to weight ratio. And because it's opposed piston, there are no cylinder heads the pistons meet in the middle. It's efficient and compact, but it's also mechanically unusual. If the idea of timing three crankshafts doesn't scare you, you might have what it takes to be a Deltic mechanic. Finally, the famous Wankel rotary engine. No pistons here instead, you have a triangular rotor spinning inside a specially shaped housing, creating combustion chambers as it turns. Rotaries are super compact, have very few moving parts, and can rev incredibly high. Mazda made them famous in the RX-7 and RX-8, where they delivered smooth, high-revving power with a unique exhaust note. But they do have drawbacks. Fuel economy? Not great. Emissions? Also not great. Apex seals? Let's just say they're a weak point. Still, for pure mechanical elegance and sound, the Wankel is a fan favorite. That is it for this video. Hopefully you learned a lot about engine configurations. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment down below which configuration is your favorite. See you!